Okay, so let me define the linear impulse. Okay. I is the linear impulse and it's given by the integral of force integrated over time. So from T1 to T2. And clearly impulse is a vector because it's the integral of force which is a vector. Now I'm going to use Newton's law to derive an expression for the impulse. Mass is mass times acceleration is Newton's law, so m dv dt is another way of writing f equals ma. And so I can take uh, move dt around. So f dt equals m dv, which means that now if you take the integral i of uh, f dt t1 t2 is the same as m uh, integral dv or that's m v2 minus v1. We can do that only because mass is independent of velocity. We can pull it out. So this is uh, the definition of impulse. If you're given either of those things, you're given velocity 1, velocity 2, then you can find impulse or you can take the integral of force dt to find impulse. Another way of writing this, which is known as the principle of, the principle which we are going to talk about, principle of impulse and momentum is basically the same equation but written in a slightly different way. So I'm going to move this mv1 around, sum it with t f dt to give me mv2. So this is saying that if there is a mass, a particle moving with a velocity v1 and it's acted upon by a force f, over a time uh, dt, t1 to t2, then the effect of that force is to change the angular momentum of the body or the particle to mv2. Okay, So mv1 plus f dt produces mv2. So this is just another way of writing the same equation. This is nothing different from the first one which I wrote. This is the same equation. Perhaps the first first one is, this is like if you are asked to find i, usually given f, then you can use that expression. But if you are told to uh, find the effect of a force and you are told to find a new velocity, then you can think of using the second one. But really they are the same equations. So method of analysis. One is draw coordinate frame, and this is needed because you need to define which direction v bar is positive, which direction f is positive. Then draw f b d, and then the third uh, is apply principle of impulse and momentum. Okay, so I'll solve the problem and then eventually I'll, I'll try to uh, tell you how to think about when to apply this principle. But really what you see is that uh, since this comes from f equals ma, what we are doing is we are taking the 
equation f equals m a in its integrated form as opposed to using the acceleration form. So it's, this is really uh, nothing new. It's the same thing which you learned when you did f equals m a. Just it's a different way of uh, writing the equations. Okay, so we're writing this down. Okay, so okay, this is the question I wanted to do. Okay, the motor exerts a force F on the 40 kg crate. So this is 40 kg as shown in the graph. Okay, so the force as a function of time is given to you. Find the speed of the crate when T is 3 seconds. So 3 seconds is somewhere here and when t is 6 seconds. So you define the velocity. Let me write that down here. Velocity when t is 3 seconds and the velocity when t is 6 seconds. You also told that the velocity is 10 meters per second when t is 0. So right here. Okay, is the question clear? Uh, a force is applied by the motor which causes the 40 kg block to, well, uh, it could be moving up or down, but the force causes an acceleration clearly and the, and the acceleration is upward. So the, the mass is moving downwards to begin with, with 10 meters per second. You have to find what happens when this force is applied as a function of time. And you're given only the graph of force versus time. Okay. So why would we apply? Uh, well, first of all, um, you could do this problem totally with, uh, since you're given f as a function of time, right? And you're to find the velocity, you can use f equals ma, get the acceleration, integrate that to get the velocity. So that's totally fine. You could do this with f equals ma. So I'm going to show you how to do it with principle of impulse and work. So impulse and momentum. Yeah, but before that, let's let's uh, draw the free body diagram. F, that's two F, and for the block, it's M G, and two F upwards. Okay, so coordinate frame. Okay, let's say upwards is positive. Okay, the principle of impulse and momentum says that mv1 plus uh, integral f dt equals mv2. And I'm going to skip the vector on v and f because this is a one dimensional problem. There's no uh, two dimensions. So v1, v2, f are scalars. Okay. You could also apply, if it was two-dimensional problem, you could apply the same principle for the x and for the y. But in this case, you're only interested in y. Okay, so what we need to do is find the velocity at t equals 3 seconds, t equals 6 seconds. We know that The velocity at t equals 0 is 10 meters per second. And uh, since my convention is upwards is positive, the velocity is down, downwards is going to be negative. So I'm going to write it as negative. Okay. So I, I can find mv1 because I know mass. I don't know what v2 is. 
So in order to compute V2, I need to find F dt. Okay. I have been given the force as a function of time in the graph. Uh, F dt is what? Is, the, is basically the area under the plot, right? This expression here is the area under the F dt, F dt plot. So if I can find the area from T1 to P2, I'm done. I just have to find the area, put it in here, and, and, and I'm done. So let's take, uh, so let's do the first part, which is find the, well, I think six meters is much simpler. Let's do T equals six, uh, V two equals question mark. I'm gonna write V two when time is six, okay? So I need to find F dt. F dt is basically the area under the curve from T equals T1 to T equals T2. So if you like, this is T1 is zero, and this is, yeah, sorry, this is just, I'm just writing the, the principle. I need to uh, shove in the value, right? I'm not, I'm not uh, put in F there. F is, okay, so perhaps this will make it clear. Let, let me write put a different variable here. just so that you don't get confused. Okay, so net force is uh, 2t minus mg. So that's the thing, that's the force which will go here. I'll write net here. Okay. So in effect, okay, so this is going to be more confusing. I'm, I'm going to write f only here because uh, this is given an F here, and if I put T, then I think you'll get, you'll get confused. So I'm going to write that principle as F net, so that you don't confuse with other F. Okay, F net, sounds good, 2F minus mg. So F net dt is uh, 2 integral F dt, T1, T2 minus mg uh, T, T1, T2. Well, I, I skipped a step. I, I removed mg outside of the integral because mg is a constant. So this is the area under the curve. The area under the curve, all the way, this the whole this whole thing, right? So integral f dt, where t goes from zero to six, is the area under the curve, like I've shown here. You know what the area of a trapezoid is? This is a trapezoid. One. It's one half. The base, which is six. times the sum of the heights. The height is 150 and 450. Well, that comes to three plus, three times 600. No, uh, yeah, 600. That's 1800, I think. Right. So what I have here is two times 1800 minus mg mass is 40 kilograms times 9.81 times the time t2 minus t1, which is six. So putting in one, uh, what I get for V2 is V2 at t equals six minus 5.68 meters. Sorry, it's 21.1, my bad, 21.1 meters per second. So initially the mass is moving down with 10 meters per second 
but after six seconds, because of the force, it's now moving up. So how do I know it's up? My convention was upwards is positive, and I, the sign on B2 is positive. So it's moving upwards. OK, so that gives me the velocity at 6 seconds. I also need to find the velocity at 3 seconds. Okay. So the expression here remains the same. I have to use the same expression as 1, but I need to find, well, uh, V2 is going to be at t equals 3 seconds. I need to find the work done by the net force. So F net dt is going to be uh, 2 times uh, 3, 0, F dt minus mg 3, 0, dt. Maybe I should write here. This is 6 and 0. Okay. Okay, so I... So this part is easy, mgdt. I need to find fdt, the work done by the force f. Now, uh, that's going to clearly be the area under the curve, but it's going to be the area under the curve from t equals 0 all the way to t equals 3. Okay. So in this plot, it's going to be this area. Okay. So I need to find, in order to find this area, I need to find what this value of forces. What's the force when time 3 equals uh, 3 seconds? And to do that, I need to write the equation of the line and then find the intercept. So to find F, what I do is, let me do it right here. So F at 3. Okay? So I'm going to write the equation of this line, which is F3 minus 150 divided by uh, 450 minus 150 equals F3 is at 3 seconds, so 3 minus 0, 150 that's 0, and then uh, there is 450 is when time is 6, and 150 is when time is 0. Okay. If you thought this was confusing, you can... I did, did not quite write it as a slope, but if you want to write it as a slope, then you just move things around. So F3 is at, maybe you are more used to this, so F3 minus 150 is, F3 acts when the time is 3 seconds, so I'll write that here, and 150 is when time is 0. Okay. Next, I need two other points, so 450 minus 150, and so the force, the time when force is 450 is 6, and the time when force is 150 is, is 0. So that is another way of writing it, whatever you like. Uh, the first one is using similar triangle. The second one is actually taking the slope of the, of the line. Both will give you the same answer. So the similar triangle is this. And the other one is basically getting the slope. So if you do this math, then you get F3 equals I got 300 newtons. So this is 300 newtons. Okay. So given that, I can find the area under the plot. 30F dt. It's simply half times the base. So the base is 3 for 3 seconds times the sum of the height. So the height is 150 plus 300 is the other height when t is 3 seconds. So this comes out to be 450 times 3 is, what do you get for this? Okay, so 675 is the answer. All I need to do is uh, write it here. Equals 2 times 675 minus mg is 40 times 9.81 times 3 
integral dt is uh, t minus 0, so that's 3. Okay, so again, putting in in 1, you can find v2 at t equals 3 seconds. The answer is minus 5.68. Okay, note that the sign is negative, which indicates that the velocity of the mass is downwards, not upwards. So, as I said, it's very important to put the right, put a sign convention or put a coordinate frame because then your answers uh, will will come out with the right sign. Okay, another thing to note is that, and I probably didn't say this, is F net, the net force is 2f minus mg and it's that way because positive force is upwards the so 2f is upwards positive and mg is downwards negative you know the, uh, if i had made the convention instead y positive is downwards then my net force would be mg minus 2f okay so that's why you need the sign convention not only for the uh, displacement it's also for the force Is that clear? Now you could you could do this totally without using principle of work and imposition. In fact, you should try this. Uh, what you will do is, after you draw the free body diagram, okay, you write the equations of motion. There's only a single equation of motion. That is, acceleration is mg minus. Sorry, it's going to be 2f minus mg is the acceleration, right? And then you know what f is. It's a function of time. So you can integrate acceleration once to get the velocity. And your answer should come out to be exactly what I got over here. Okay. You could also do this with, uh, with energy principle. F, principle of work and energy will also give you the same answer. So this is moving under gravity. Okay, so the issue with doing it with the principle of work and energy, as I said, is that it's not a good idea to use principle of work when you're asked to find velocity as a function of time. In this question, you're asked to find velocity as a function of uh, time. Okay, principle of work and energy is useful when you're told to find velocity as a function of distance. So uh, you could use principle of work and energy, but there's be more work involved. Okay, so I think the two things you can do here is a uh, principle of uh, impulse, like what I did, or equations of motion. Okay, yeah, so this this thing about how to which principle to apply is going to be very important when you answer the final exam because you're not going to know where the question is from, which part of the which part of the course. Okay, so when you do problems here on, you should always think, can I do it in another way? Okay, so as an exercise, you should try solving this using equations of motion. I'll write it down here so that you'll remember. <clears throat>